Hello, and welcome to a new episode of Loda Pro, where I teach you how to take your codes to the next level. My name is Ace, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how you can improve your custom commands. Microsoft did release a new update to commands where you can write them within PowerFX, but there are some severe limitations to this. For example, you can really only use certain PowerFX commands, not all PowerFX commands. Well, what I'm going to show you is one way that we can kind of sidestep around PowerFX and just do some of these functions ourselves. Now, I will be including a script of some of the most common pieces of code that I get asked about for some of these kinds of commands. But nevertheless, let's jump right in. I'm going to give you your immediate example of how we can kind of make our commands a lot better. I am here in my demo model driven app. And one thing that I want to be able to do is let's say I don't want to go to a form whenever I click on these records for whatever reason. I want to go instead to a custom page that has some extra stuff that it's going to be performing on this record. And I just need to be able to navigate there. We have the ability to do that. If I click on this record, there we go. I'm in my custom page and now I have the ability to kind of see what record is being pulled in. How do you do this? Well, let me show you. The very first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a separate solution that just has whatever table you want to add these buttons to. For example, here I only have the account table in the solution. Let's say I want to add another table. Let's say I want to add a virtual mentoring table. By the way, this is not our actual virtual mentoring information. This is just something I built for fun. Now, if you want to add a table to this, what you'll do is you'll find your table, select it, hit next, and make sure to uncheck include all objects. No objects should be selected. Ace, why? What happens? If you do leave objects selected in this, when you use our next tool, it's going to give you an error, letting you know that, hey, you can't use this. This is not something that I can work with. We're going to add that object. And that's all you need. Now, the second tool, which we're going to put all the stuff into, that is known as XRM Toolbox. XRM Toolbox is a great way of interacting with your data and interacting just with your apps in general in a more pro code manner, but still giving you some of the same features that like a low code would. It's just an excellent tool that you can use for a ton of different things. In XRM Toolbox, what you will want is to go to your tool library. If you do not have XRM Toolbox installed, we will link a little guide in the description on how to install an XRM toolbox. Once you get it open in your tool library, you want to search for the ribbon workbench. Go ahead and get that installed and connect to your organization. Once you get into the ribbon workbench, I'm actually going to close this. Yep, yeah, I'm sure. So you'll see it here. We open our ribbon workbench. I'm already connected to your specific environment, but once you do so, find the solution with your tables in it and go ahead and get that open. Those tables are the only thing that's going to go in that solution. That's why I have one that is the commands plus solution and the command helper solution, just because I don't want to have to worry about those two trying to fight each other. I can see some of the commands and the buttons that are already pre-built into my account table. And we can also see the buttons that have these red check marks. Those are the buttons that I have inserted myself. If you're wondering what does button two do? Why do you have this extra stuff in there? That is from my notifications videos. If you want to learn how to add notifications to your forms and grids, you can learn how to do so in this video. We are going to want to build a button that will take us to a certain place. In our case, a custom page. Let's go ahead and add in a new button. You do have to name these buttons in a very, very specific way when you want to change the way that a record is being opened. To change the way that a record is being opened, you have to use the same ID name in both of the following places. Your button itself, and the command. We're going to change this ID to the following capital M S C R M dot open record item. You can put the label as whatever you want. It does not matter to me. What does need to happen is we're going to create a new command. What are we going to name this command Ace? It's going to be the exact same thing. M S C R M dot open record item would help if you spell it right. So we are going to add in an action here. We're going to add in a JavaScript action. Modern commands do support the usage of JavaScript. Do not get me wrong. However, the biggest problem with trying to add JavaScript like this, or specifically this type of command into your app or into your tables, you cannot change the ID of what your command and your button are in the modern designer. 
there's some ways you can kind of coax it by changing like the display name when you first create it, but off the top of the bat, that's not really how it works. It's asking me for a library and a function name. Okay, so what are the library and function name? What do those mean? You're gonna need to add in a new web resource. Once you add in the web resource, which is gonna be just the JavaScript file that we have in the description of this video, you are going to search for your web resource. Mine is PWLTP, I know it starts with that. And I named mine ribbon command plus. Yours might be named something different, but what's not different is what follows. Okay, you need to put in your function name. It's gonna be PW low to pro dot grid commands dot open record command. And if you see me glancing off screen and you're wondering why I'm doing that, I am making sure that my naming convention matches. So here's the code that I am gonna be working with here. We have a few different things that we're gonna be working with. Some of these are surprises, so don't worry about them. But we are calling on our grid command and part of the grid command has two different actions we can use. So we are going to use this open record command. I say action, but really it's a function. And it's gonna ask you for some parameters. The first parameter it's going to ask you for is the selected record reference. That is just going to be one of our CRM parameters. And then we are going to have our custom page name. Now, if you don't have a custom page, that is a-okay. Pretty soon here, I plan on putting out a video on how to have uh, Navigate to direct you to, you to a custom page and you can carry over some of that data from your Navigate to. What we're going to do now is we are going to just make sure we have our spelling correct. We're gonna add our parameters. What you want is a CRM parameter. And the CRM parameter you're going to want is going to be the first selected item ID. Ace, how do you know which one you're picking? How do you know what all these things mean? experience one that's and some of this is outlined in the microsoft documentation but whenever it's referring to a selected thing it's typically referring to a grid so first selected item id is going to be whatever item you have selected first for your grid so whatever we're opening is going to be what we're clicking on now we need to add a parameter a string parameter this is going to be the uh, parameter that you are using when you are passing in the name of your custom page. Let me show you how to get that. All right, let me come out of my command helper and into my ribbon commands. I have my LTP demo page here, and here is the name. To access this here, if you're not able to just copy and paste it, which it usually doesn't let you, you are going to go to advanced and see solution layers. So click on the three dots, advanced, see solution layers. Click on this unmanaged layer here. And then you are going to find in this big old list where it says name on the left, okay? Your custom page name is going to be on the right here. Or if you wanna type it in manually, that's also an option. I just have misspelled things so often that this is the route that I go down. So let's go ahead and close you. Okay, once we have that, let me open this back up. I have mine copied here and you'll see all of my little, I can paste that in here. Those are the only two parameters I need for this code to run. The only other thing, and this is really entirely dependent on how you want it to render and look, you can add an enable rule. I have this enable rule here. All it is is it says that you have to have at least one record selected for the button to appear. The button really doesn't need to appear as long as it has that ID on the command and the button itself it'll run whatever you want to do whenever you open it, which is why we use the JavaScript action. Once you have that command set up, we are going to, I have two of them because, well, I was doing this already. I'm actually gonna delete one of these just so I can know which one to select. Okay, on MSCRM, open record item, your command is going to be open record item, okay? I'm actually going to delete this button or leave this one. Reason why I'm deleting it is simply because I have two of them and I wanna be able to show you guys what it would look like with just the one. And that way we don't get confused. Once you are done, you will just hit publish. And there we go. Once that is published, I am going to click on, you can click on any one of these records. Does not matter which one you do, it's going to take you to the same place every single time. So. I go here, I click on blue yonder. Great, I clicked on blue yonder. If you are interested in finding out how to make your custom page pass in parameters from the URL, like this one is doing, up here we have the record ID. And if you wanna know how we're getting that data from the URL, 
into our Canvas app or our custom page, either a YouTube video will appear above my hand here, or I will film that video for you and we will show you guys how to do that. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do with the code that we provided you is going to be how to show and hide a section based on the click of a button. We did something similar to this in our Business Rules Plus where I showed you how to hide and show a section based on a value of a field. But let's say you wanted to like hide and show a, a bunch of uh, visuals. That is pretty easy to do as well. We're going to add another button in and we can put this really wherever. I tend to put buttons where they're going to be seen, but also where they're the most helpful. So if I'm, I'm actually just going to slide that all the way over to here. Some of these don't appear depending on what type of record it is, but I'm just going to slide all these over and just take you stick it somewhere. For this one, the ID doesn't matter as much. We can put our button, our label here as show hide section. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new command. All right, this is going to be Another JavaScript action. We're gonna use that same library. And for this function, we are going to do pw loadabro dot form commands dot show hide section. So for this one, we're no longer working with grid commands. We're gonna work with form commands now. We just need to provide a few things. The form context, the tab name, and the section name. How do we get all those things? Super easy. You might have heard me mention form context when talking about our scripting before, but here is how we get it from here. In our CRM parameters, we are going to use our primary control. Boom. Primary control simply refers to the control in which this is being executed. However, that really only applies to forms because you can have multiple forms that things are being executed in. So primary is just the topmost form that this is happening in. That's gonna give us our form context. Now we have to add two string parameters, two string parameters. Our first string parameter is going to be the name of the tab. Let's grab an area out of the general tab. For the sake of it being easy for me to do this, I'm going to go ahead and remove the command from this open record item. And I'm gonna put a little two after that. Otherwise it'll always redirect me back to that custom page. Now I just need to figure out what section I want to show and hide. And on the account form, let's go ahead and get that open. Let's say I want to show and hide this address, right? This section is called address, nice and simple. I'm gonna go back to my XRM toolbox on my tab of general. I'm going to have my section called address show and hide based on whether or not the button has been clicked. By default, it's going to show. And if you want, you can verify that this tab is called general, but that's typically the first tab in every form, typically. Okay, so now all we have to do is publish and wait. Now that that's done, I'm going to just give this a nice hard refresh. And the easiest way to test to see whether or not it sends me back or if I need to do a hard refresh again is just to, in the event that your record is giving you some trouble with constantly going back to this and not letting you just disable it, you can just go in to XRM toolbox and delete the command. If you're just testing this, it's totally fine. We can just delete this for right now. Boop. And then before we publish, let's add our command and publish. Yep. While we're waiting for this, I do have a question for you guys watching this video. Would you like me to go a bit more in depth into working with commands or would you like to see me go a little bit more in depth into working with just the client API, explaining what all of these different things mean. Let's go ahead and get this Superstar open. And let's go ahead and we are going to, we're trying to hide this address field here. So based on when we click the button, this should disappear and then reappear for us. Yes, we can make it all fancy with like a sliding hide, but just for what we're doing here, that works perfectly. In the script that you're gonna be provided in the description, you do have two other functions. One is going to do so based on a condition and the other will just open a custom page directly from the form. Both of those can be used in kind of the same CRM parameters. The only difference between them being for, let's go, let's just choose one. For the, add an action, we just add this parameter just so we can see what this is gonna be. For the form, the selected record reference that you're going to need is going to be first primary item ID. 
apologies. That's gonna get you the ID of the record. And then for the open record command with conditions, so that way if you wanna open it based on whether or not you have a true or false field that specifically is a true or false field, we're gonna wanna use selected control. And then for the condition field, you're just gonna put in the logical name of whatever the field is. There are gonna be notes in the file that will help you get an idea of like which ones you want to use, but just some extra goodies. If you're interested in learning how to do JavaScript, we do have a course on our ODL. It is actually my course, the Introduction to JavaScript. It'll teach you how to kind of start from literally knowing nothing about JavaScript to getting you to a better understanding of how it works and kind of what you're looking at when you are interacting with these kind of scripts here. If you are interested in seeing more of this kind of content, subscribe and leave a comment down below. Again, let me know if you wanna see more about commands or if you wanna see more about the client API or the backend XRM JavaScript sort of thing. Either way, my name is Ace, this has been Loda Pro, and I will see you next one. Bye.